All right, we will go ahead and get started here. Um, so today's webinar is going to be on Genesis Cloud Log Connection or Collection. So what to do to obtain the logs that are required to work on um, issues that we find within Genesis Cloud. Uh, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior engineer with Inflow Communications, and I'll be bringing you through this webinar today. Here's a quick look at our agenda. This should be a fairly short webinar designed to show you exactly what to do to collect those logs and why. We're gonna do a quick talk about who we are at Inflow Communications and what we do, and then talk about why we should collect logs and the different procedures for log collection depending on the browser or application you're using in Genesis Cloud. So a little bit about who we are over here at Inflow Communications. Um, for the last 11 years and onward as well, we are focused on contact center and unified com communication solutions. We work on voice. We don't work on networking equipment or other solutions of that nature. As a result, calling in to us and working with our support team, you'll be able to talk with somebody who's well-versed in your voice environment and will be able to, to assist you with whatever you need. We have over 50 employees headquartered in Portland, Oregon, but we are 100% remote and in-field. And we currently support over 260,000 seats and 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. We like to operate with speed, urgency, and agility to make sure we're getting you all the information and assistance you need as quickly as possible and as exhaustive as possible to make sure that your, your problem will not only get fixed, but will go away permanently. And we have a full life cycle guide to the UC, um, the contact center, and the CX spaces. Here's a quick snippet of some of our customers. Um, we do focus on mission critical communications, um, st strategic decision making. We value partnerships greatly, and we um, we like to work with mid-market and enterprise customers. And here's a few of our partners as well. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. This is gonna be all about Genesis Cloud blog collection. So this is for the Genesis Cloud voice platform. If you're using this platform, um, this is going to be what you would want to do to gather the logs that may be required for any issues that you may run into while using the platform. And we have a few different pieces that we're going to be looking at. Specifically, there are um, different instructions for Google Chrome, for Mozilla Firefox, and for the desktop application. So we'll be going through each one of those. Um, and we'll be talking right now about why we would want to gather those logs. The logs that we're, we're going to be talking about today are the console and network logs that are often asked for um, to um, help figure out what may, go, may be going on with a particular issue within Genesis Cloud. It allows the um, support staff at Genesis to actually take a look at the detailed events surrounding the issue at hand so that they can get a handle as to what might be broken and then attempt to fix it. So what these logs will do that we're going to be talking about is these do allow end-to-end -end research on issues. Um, this is going to provide what's called a correlation ID for Genesis Cloud to be able to track every occurrence um, through the system, whether it be an interaction or a UI function that could be not working. Um, they may also allow you to see issues clearly, um, such as getting a 404 trying to get to a resource, for example, or specific permissions being missing. Some of, some of the time, these logs will actually show you the issue as you're pulling the logs and you may be able to fix it. Some of the things such as permissions can be in plain text. So this can make your life a little bit easier. It does com give complete info on interactions when supplied with an interaction ID. They can use that with the interaction ID and the correlation ID to track the call end to end through the platform entirely to see where the issue may be if there is a call quality issue. And then finally, with these correlation IDs and these logs, it allows Genesis Cloud Engineering to research complex issues. So if you have something going on that's gonna require a little bit of extra time, this will still get them exactly what they need to actually pinpoint the problem. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about getting set up today. There are two different kinds of logs that you'll end up needing to get from within either Chrome, Firefox, or the desktop application. One of them will be the console logs. This is going to be con detailed console information that Genesis Cloud will need in order to determine what might be happening. This is very, very important for UI issues, um, but can be important for even interaction issues as well. And so these steps are going to um, go through what we need to do in order to get the logs in Chrome. So to go through each one of these here, um, and on the right, you will see a um, screenshot of the developer tools that we use for this. 
When you press F12 within Chrome, and this actually does work within Firefox as well, this will access the developer console. The developer console you may have seen um, from time to time if you haven't used it for other things of this nature. Um, you may have accidentally hit F12 from time to time and seen this on your, on your browser already. It's got a few different tabs like console and network up above. Um, this is going to give you access to what you need to do in order to grab the logs that we're going to need. So you'll press F12 to access that developer console, and then you'll highlight the console tab, which you'll see in the screenshot there. From there, you're going to click on the cog, which is the top right of the developer bar. You'll see that it is currently highlighted in blue. That is going to bring up all the checkboxes that are below that. And this is important because we need to make sure that we have the correct attributes turned on at the console level in order to get the, the appropriate level of information to Genesis. Specifically, there are three boxes that aren't checked by default that will need to be checked, which are log XML HTTP requests, show timestamps, and prefer, preserve log upon navigation. Um, these need to be checked. Um, and then once you do that, you will then just click on the console tab and make sure all of your filters are selected. You'll see here next to filter in my screenshot, it says all levels. You'll want to make sure you click on that drop down and then make sure that every filter is selected. Once this is done, you need to keep this console open and reproduce your issue. So if you're having an issue where a agent is having one way audio on calls, for example, and you can reproduce it, you would have them place a test call and that test call would get logged in the console log. Once you've reproduced your issue, you'll just right click anywhere in the body of the tab. So where it says the things like the failed to road, load resource, the XSR fish, finished loading, you would just right click in there and save the log file. And then you'll provide this file to support. Now, one thing that's important to note, and this does hold true for all three applications, this box does have to be open while you are reproducing the issue. Um, and um, one way that you can make this a little bit easier is if you click on the three dots, there's different dock settings. And one of the settings is you can set up the, um, the console in the developer box as its own standalone window, which is what I did here, might make it quite a bit easier for you to navigate through the menus. So that's how you grab the console logs in Chrome. Next up, let's talk about the network logs, which actually happens through the exact same um, interface, which makes this very easy. And yes, you can do both of these at the same time. So to go through these steps as well, um, you'll just press F12 again to access the developer console. And then you're going to click on the network tab. Right under the network tag in the on the first row, there is a box to preserve the log. You'll want to click on that preserve log box. And then again, leave the console open and reproduce the issue. Once the issue has been reproduced, you just simply right click in the network tab and you will, you will select save all as har with content. This is gonna create a har file, which you would then wanna get to support as well. So you, you would send that to us and we would send that over to Genesis for you. That's gonna contain all of the information that we need from the network level for anything that could be going on. So if there's any 401s like an unauthorized that we're getting, or if we're getting a timeout to a specific resource, this is gonna give us the information we need for that. Um, and you can do both of these at the same time. So you can set up the filters and the, um, the different stamps for the console log. You can set up the network log. You can capture the issue and then save both files. This is the preferred way to do it because we want to make sure we have full range of information for the exact example that we're going to provide to Genesis Cloud. So this is the way to do it, nice and easy. And so just like before, you can set this up as its own separate box as well. And so that's how it works in Chrome. Let's talk a little bit about Firefox now. Firefox is a little bit different, not that much different, um, but it, it is actually pretty easy to do as well. Um, so the same thing here, we're gonna press F12 to enter that developer console, and then we're gonna click on the console tab, which you'll see highlighted in my screenshot. On the right, there's gonna be a cog. So one row down on the right side, you'll see it is currently expanded in the screenshot as well. And you want to make sure that persist logs and show timestamps are on there. Persist logs is going to make sure if you navigate web pages that it doesn't clear the console log, which is what it will do by default. And show timestamps will show the timestamps when each um, value occurred. 
again, we're going to leave the console open, reproduce the issue. And then this is where things are a little bit different in Firefox. If you're using Firefox, what you need to do is you actually need to copy and select all the text in the console, in the console log and do a control C or right click copy, and then pop that into a notepad file and then get that file over to us. So it doesn't automatically save a file for you, but you can still grab all of the information and put it into a file, which is what we would need to do in Firefox. So that's the big difference between Firefox and Chrome. You could do that in Chrome as well. It's just much easier to just download the file um, because it will grab everything that you need. And just like in Chrome, if you click the three dots on the second bar there, you can change the doc settings and you can set up the developer tools as its own standalone window. I highly recommend that, especially if you have to wait to capture issues, like if it's a sporadic issue, set up that, set up your console and your network logs, set up that box um, as its own standalone window and then hide it so it's not in the way. Then you can just simply stop the, uh, stop the processes and grab the files when the issue has been reproduced. will make your life a lot easier. Kind of the same thing here for gathering the network logs as well. So it's again, gonna be done through the same developer console. Um, and when we, when we click on this, this time we're gonna select the network tab and then we're gonna click on the cog, which you'll see expanded. And we're gonna click on persist logs, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to keep those logs even if you navigate to a different web page. Um, one extra step you can take here, that trash can in the on the left-hand side, you can click on that before starting your logging if you know that you're going to be able to uh, create an um, example of the issue very easily. This will allow you to completely clear the, net the network logging up to the point that you're starting your testing to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, then again, you'll want to leave the network tab open and reproduce the issue. Once you're done, you can right-click into the network tab um, so any any of the information that is supplied in there, so you'll see a bunch of 200s. Any um, anything that you couldn't reach would be like a 404. You'll see you'll see HTML or HTTP codes in there, and you can right click and save all as HAR with content. This is going to get you the file that you'll need to um, send to support as well. So um, same thing as with Chrome. You can do both of these at the exact same time. That's the way that we would like you to do it so that we have network and console logs for um, the issue at hand. Grab those files and then send those to support so that we can get a ticket started with Genesis. And then finally, we have the desktop application. The desktop application is just a Chromium wrapper. So it's very, very similar to the Chrome setup, but there is a few key differences. In fact, um, for these, it's more of a combination of Chrome and Firefox than it is just Chrome. So we're going to talk about actually enabling the developer tools in the application first. Um, in the application, up on the top left, just like any other application, you'll have the name of the application, Genesis Cloud. If you click on that, there's going to be a spot for advanced preferences. And if you click on that, you'll want to enable developer tools. This is going to allow developer tools to be accessible. There is one more step once you're done with that. You'll want to click on Genesis Cloud again, and then you'll want to select Show Console. Show Console is going to pop up a window very similar to the screenshot that I have on the right side of the page here. And from there, you can just simply follow these instructions. So you'll just click the three dots in the upper right, and then just like in Chrome, you want to make sure that you have log XML HTTP requests, show timestamps, and preserve log upon navigation all enabled. Um, and then you'll click on the console tab and you will you will enable all filters. Notice that in my screenshot, it shows the filter at default levels. That's gonna tell me that I have a few filters that I do need to turn on. So I should hit that drop down and make sure everything is selected. It should say all levels. Once this is done, we can reproduce the issue just like we can in Chrome and Firefox. Once that is done though, um, we would copy all the text in the console tab and save it to a notepad file. So just like, um, we would in Firefox, so it is a little bit different from Chrome here. Um, we need, we do need to copy the information into its own notepad file um, so that we can get that over to support and get that in Genesis Cloud's hands. But this will get you what you need. And then finally, we have the network logs for the desktop app. So the same thing, we need to enable that developer tool. We need to, we need to um, turn on the console by clicking on Show Console. And then we're simply gonna click on the network tab, click on preserve log, which you can see highlighted in the screenshot, reproduce the issue, and then you will copy 
you will right click on any line in the network tab and select copy and then copy is hard with content. Note, this is not going to create a file. This is simply just grabbing all the information so that you can paste it into a notepad file again. Um, at this point, you can then paste that all into a notepad file and get this over to support. So uh, just, just like before, you can do both of these at the same time. We highly recommend that. Um, it's going to make our life and your life a lot easier, especially if we do need to go back and get a, um, other examples down the road. This box is standalone by default in the desktop app. So it, it is a box you will be able to hide um, as you go through your day to day. So it can be out of the way of agents as you were trying to figure out the problem. And so with that, this concludes our webinar today. Um, there is a questions box in your GoToWebinar application. If you have any questions about the procedures that I just outlined, go ahead and um, throw your question into that box and I will answer it. If there's anything that I can't directly answer, I will make sure to get that to you as well. I'll give you guys just a moment here to see if I get any questions coming through. All right, looks like we aren't going to have any questions here. So if anything does come up, you can always get in touch with us as well. Here's, here's a number to reach us at, as well as a contact email. So you can reach us at 844-446-3569. You can also send us an email at contact at inflowcommunications.com. And if you're interested in any more information that Inflow has to offer, um, you, can, you can easily re, uh, check out our knowledge base for more resources and more videos, just like this one. Again, on behalf of Inflow Communications, my name is Tom. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. We do hope to see you soon, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.